there's a saying that the best things in life are free. But what about education? Can you give your kids a really good education at low or no cost? That's what we're talking about on today's episode of the podcast. Hi, I'm Pam Barnhill, and I have helped thousands of homeschoolers create doable systems, beat burnout, and bring more joy to their homeschool day. Welcome to episode 22 of the 10 Minutes to a Better Homeschool podcast. Okay, so today we're talking about homeschooling on the cheap. So we're going to rub those pennies together until they squeak. Well, let's first of all talk about um, homeschooling cheaply, but not necessarily free. So obviously we want to do this because a lot of homeschool families are on one income. And this is what we give up, right, to homeschool our kids is that we give up one of those two incomes that the family uh, might be having. And then, you know, today more and more people are working and homeschooling. So that's something to keep into consideration as well. You know, after we came out of 2020, we have way more people who are working at homeschooling too. So let's talk about this homeschooling on the cheap thing. Here's the deal. If you have time, you can homeschool much cheaper. If you have more money, then you can buy yourself the convenience of homeschooling more easily. So what I mean by this is I have always found through the years that what I give up in uh, what I give up in money, I I have to spend the time to find the resources, the time to do all the other things to homeschool more cheaply. But if I actually have the money, then I can actually spend less time. So hopefully that's making sense. And I think that's really like that with just about anything else out there, right? If I have more time, I can save money. If I have a little bit of extra money, I can save some time. And it is very much the same thing with homeschooling. So Can you homeschool cheaply? Can you homeschool for free? Yes, you can. Is it going to take you a little more time to do that? Probably so. You're going to have to spend more time looking for things online. You're going to have to spend more time preparing lessons. You may have to spend more time making copies, which aren't always the cheapest way to get copies of things. Um, But you're going to have to spend more time doing those kinds of things. So how can you save a little bit of money? with your homeschooling. Well, you know, you can do things like use the library more. Homeschoolers have these big, uh, often have these big home libraries of lots and lots of books, but you don't have to do that. There's nothing that says you have to buy all the books. You can actually go down to the library and borrow the books that you want to use in your homeschool. So there's a lot of very cheap homeschooling that could be done with just a library card. What if your library doesn't have the books? We hear this all the time from people and they're like, oh, you know, my library never has any of the books that are on the good book list. And sadly, I think as libraries change with culture over time, this is going to be more and more true. The books that a lot of homeschool book lists recommend are not necessarily going to be the one at your library. So a couple of things, definitely hit up library book sales. Now, I just told you not to buy books. But if you can get your hands on some good old books that your library might be phasing out for super cheap, like a quarter or 50 cents a book, totally worth it to do that. The second thing you have to do is utilize interlibrary loan. Now, sometimes libraries have a fee for using this, but a lot of libraries don't. So if you can get books from far off libraries within your library system using interlibrary loan, that's definitely something that you want to do. Um, scouring yard sales. Once again, we're back to homeschooling cheaply, not necessarily for free by, uh, by going to yard sales and thrift stores and trying to find books. Thrift stores are also a fabulous place to pick up old games. And sometimes even like at our local secondhand bookstore, you'll find full homeschool curriculum there. So the other thing we have to do is when we're trying to homeschool very cheaply or for free is we not we, we have to not be so married to a particular resource. And so if the homeschool book list suggests this book about apples or this book about um, reptiles and we can't find that book, 
Well, then we have to come up with a different resource. We have to either choose a different book that the library has just because they have it, or maybe we go online and we search out an alternative resource like a, um, a video, like a YouTube video. There's so many fabulous little YouTube videos about reptiles, about apples, about all of those topics, and that is absolutely free. So YouTube, a fabulous place for homeschooling for free or on the cheap. You just got to watch the comments and the ads on there and make sure that, you know, uh, your kids aren't being exposed to things you don't want them to be exposed to. So definitely stay on top of that kind of thing. So the internet has made a wealth of information available for free. And then also your library is still the place to go. And a lot of times libraries will have things like microscopes and telescopes and other science experiment equipment that you could actually borrow and use in your homeschool. So that is another thing to do. Look at and hit up used curriculum sales. So if homeschoolers in your area are doing a used curriculum sale, you can a lot of times pick up um, things very cheaply there as well. So can you homeschool absolutely for free? Are there any resources available for you? And there actually are a couple of resources where you don't have to pay at all for homeschool curriculum. Now, you could kind of go down the rabbit whole of looking for free things on the internet. So for example, on our website, we do monthly themes that are absolutely free. So uh, if you go to pambarnhill.com, put in the name of the month, we have the themes done from about uh, October through March at the time of this podcast, and we're going to be adding more as the year goes on. These make a wonderful preschool or elementary curriculum for your kids. You can use this kind of as the basis for what you're teaching your kids. Now, it won't teach phonics. It won't teach spelling or handwriting or math. You would have to look those things up separately. But so much of your science and history and kind of unit study topics could be found from using this free themes list, especially with early elementary kids. Another resource for finding kind of free homeschool curriculum online would be someplace like Ambleside Online. Now, this is based completely on the Charlotte Mason method of homeschooling. So I highly recommend that you read some of Charlotte Mason's books, all available for free online, uh, before you decide to dive off into this particular method to make sure that it kind of meshes with your own philosophy of education for kids. But that one is also totally free. So the entire curriculum is laid out for you. There are some books you will have to procure in some way. A lot of those can be found free online. There may be some that you have to buy. And then another fabulous resource is Easy Peasy All-in-One Homeschool. Now this is uh, homeschooling from a Christian perspective. Now there's a lot of uh, non-Christian secular materials in there. They, they use a lot of those kinds of materials, but they always come at it from a Christian worldview. So you'll have to determine whether or not that'll work for your family. But the entire curriculum is written um, and laid out there online using free online resources. Now they've added some uh, things that you could purchase from their website, like all the math worksheets in a book or are different things like that, but you don't need those resources. You actually still can do that uh, for free. So the more work you want to put into it, uh, the more things that you can find for your kids. And let me just tell you, like if you look at Easy Peasy and you're like, oh, wow, there's some really fabulous things here. I want to use this piece but I don't want to use this piece. With a free curriculum, it's totally okay to do that because it's not like you're spending money on something you're not going to use. So you can totally piece this together on your own. Like I said, doing something for free, you're going to spend a little more time putting those resources together, um, but you're going to spend way less money. And that's really, really what it comes down to in the end is if I want to homeschool for free, I absolutely can but I've got to, to spend the, the time instead. Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one other kind of free resource for homeschooling for free, and that is unschooling. Now, mm, 
You don't have to buy curriculum. That's actually kind of the point. And don't run away and poo-poo this idea. Unschooling is an actual real educational philosophy. I highly encourage you to look at the writings of John Holt um, to see what unschooling is all about. And it was something that I toyed with and never ended up doing because I felt like it took a lot of work on the part of the moms. It's easier just to buy the curriculum and do the curriculum with your child than it is to put in all the work of unschooling. And a lot of unschoolers will probably tell you, uh, my homeschooling's not all that cheap because I'm constantly buying games and different experiences and things for my kids to do. If you're looking to not buy curriculum, you could get away with not doing that by unschooling. But once again, you're going to put in a lot of time and work as the mom. So it's kind of like the Ambleside Online thing. You have to make sure that the philosophy philosophy really meshes with you and what you believe about teaching children. But it's definitely something to look at. Look into that unschool philosophy and see if it would be something that would fit your family. All right. So lots of information there about homeschooling uh, for free and on the cheap. And if you find yourself in a position where you need to do that, know you can do it. It just takes a little bit of your time. I will be back again next week. We're going to be talking all about homeschooling a child with ADHD. Is it possible? Is it good for the kid? We're going to answer all of your questions. And so I will see you then. Until then, keep on homeschooling. <laughs>